So, um, I'm running a little bit behind schedule again because I ran into the minor problem of a, um, well, minor major problem of a local loss of internet connection for several days, which caused me to fall behind schedule again on Nintendo Power Perspectives because it's hard to record emulator ROM footage when, or get necessary ROMs and media files and that sort of thing when you don't have an internet connection to get them with. Not even getting legit versions on um, through uh, Nintendo Switch Online or anything like that, because again, you have to have an internet connection to access them. So, pushing back Nintendo Power retrospectives one more week. My apologies. That said, also over the course of the, of the internet outage, I was able to follow on my phone the necessary issues, not necessary, but the, I'd say, all right, by necessary, I mean, I should better say the justified conflagration and serious, for lack of a better term, exasperation with the response of the Ting Two World Con Committee and the Mark Protection Committee to what came out with the release of the Ching Tu World Con nomination and voting report for this past year's Hugo Awards. Now, this is topical to the channel because I talk about science fiction and science fiction literature a lot. I have spent a reasonable amount of time discussing about the Hugo Awards, um, discussing my picks for Hugo Awards, what Hugo Award nominees I've read, um, all that sort of fun stuff. So, and I even did some videos leading up to my trip to um, the Spokane Worldcon and did a con report video afterwards. So I feel it's appropriate for me to discuss this. It is perhaps necessary for me to discuss this. So for those who haven't been following the story to give a quick summary, because this is definitely not a Tempest in teapot. There's serious issues going on here. Um, traditionally for years, what has happened after each world con is the convention committee or con com as I've been referring to it puts out a report talking about what works were submitted for nomination, how many nominations it received, how it went through various nomination rounds and that sort of thing. And then in turn also for the actual voting, um, going through the rounds of voting and see how various works fared. This is useful because Worldcon uses a, or for the Hugo Awards, uses a uh, ranked choice voting system, which actually appropriately enough, because City of Portland is going to be going to ranked choice voting soon, it actually helped give me personally a very good understanding of ranked choice voting's works, having looked at the numbers from several previous Hugo Awards voting ranks. Like, oh, okay, I understand how this works now. Um, I almost wish that uh, the City of Portland would at least before this whole mess went down, uh, gone, okay, hey, here, here's an example of how ranked choice voting in the real world, um, where we have all the numbers out in the open with the Hugo Awards. Like, so people, you, you, people voted this way. Here's how, uh, eliminations work for that and that sort of thing. So, Chengdu World Con submitted their report and people went over the, the numbers. They were curious to see what got nominated um, or what, uh, what else was submitted by nomination, how much by certain things went. Because there were certain works like, for example, Babel by R. Um, uh, I'm going to I have to look at the name of the book because otherwise I'm going to mispronounce the author's last name. R.F. Quang, Quang. I apologize again if I'm going from sight i haven't heard seen someone heard someone pronounce out loud so i apologize if i'm mispronouncing things um that was a nebula award nominee and i believe winner but did not make nomination list so there was some question of hey what like how many people like not necessarily like who in particular that information is kept from the public but what were the numbers for nomination on here and that sort of thing and Interesting things came out. For starters, um, Babel was declared not eligible 
and no reason was given. Um, Neil Gaiman's Sandman, the Netflix series, was submitted for both individual episode for the episode Whisper of, for, uh, the Whisper of Her Rang- Wings and for the series itself. It was disqualified from the full series nomination based on, oh, it's received more nominations overall for individual for this individual episode. That's normal. That's expected. Um, that's a common thing that's happened where, Hey, more people have nominated the whole series for best long form, as opposed to individual episode for best short form or vice versa. We put it in the category where it gets the most nominations. That makes sense. But then the episode, which otherwise would have gotten enough nominations to be to qualify was disqualified for unspecified reasons. This happened for other people as well. Writers, um, like fan writers, novels that sort of thing and so this led to raising of eyebrows like hey why can't you tell us these works were and these works in particular were not eligible particularly for all these other works which did have a reason given and the response was that They could not declare these works eligible in order to be in compliance with local law. But now we need to back up a bit because prior to the Chengdu World Con actually winning the bid, there had been some skepticism raised about whether to give, whether they should be given a shot um, in general. There were concerns about the, at the time that this, they submitted their bid for nomination or or bid for eligibility, there were concerns that based around uh, freedom of expression and how this would impact panels and people being able to talk, what things people could talk about during Worldcon panels, um, including international audiences. Um, There had been issues with, uh, restrictions on LGBT speech in Chinese media. How would LGBT nominated works be handled? Um, and a few other issues. And the these are even raised before on an, another even earlier bid for a Dubai one that was eventually dropped. And the decision was made by people in the general fan community. And I'll where I'm at, my source for this is I'm on. Uh, because I went to the Worldcon um, uh, Science Fiction um, uh, Society, um, CIFWA, not CIFWA, um, which is World Science Fiction Society, um, board meeting at Book and Worldcon, I was invited, as was everyone else who was there, to join what's called the SMOF list. This is a list for people who care enough about how science fiction conventions are run and world con both world in particular and just in general to that. You're willing to take time out of your convention to not go to a science fiction author's reading or not go to a panel or not hang out with your friends. Say, Hey, we're gonna, I'm going to go take time out of my day and go to the board meeting that's run by Robert's rules of order. And, deal with adapting to that and focus on and devote my time to that rather than going out and playing and have fun, so to speak. And so anyone who goes to the board meeting gets an invite to this list. So I went, got an invite to the list. And so I was able to eavesdrop on these conversations and the decision was made. And basically the, the way the conversation went is that these concerns were valid. But also, at this point, the people running world cons were had been raised to their called their attention in the past by other members of fandom and writers and that sort of thing. That, with like one exception, the Japanese uh, world con, um, basically, world cons almost exclusively been in the global north and in majority white countries. And so there was a sense that, hey, we do want to put the world in the Worldcon, 
not just in the sense of um, we of doing cons in Europe or Australia and New Zealand, but also in countries that are underrepresented, not just among world cons themselves in terms of um, fandom populations, but also underrepresented in speculative fiction, which have burgeoning, growing science fiction populations among themselves on their own, and the um, and thus bear it, bear giving that sort of attention. And so, decision made. We like if everything else on the Hugo Award bit. Um, hosting bid is fine world cut bid is fine then let's then we put it forward to the vote and let the fans decide a bit more information about convention about world con bids so at every world con like i think it's about like three or four years out people would put forward their bids for a to host the world science fiction convention the way they do this is they put together a package of here's the venue we have in mind here's the hotels that are nearby food and food venues and that sort of thing. Um, make, confirming that we have enough hotel space to handle the thousands of people who will come in or hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands, however, many who will come in across, from across the globe to this world con, um, that this location can handle a influx of foreigners, not just the foreigners from like local countries, but also foreigners from flying in from the U S flying in from or U.S. and Canada, flying in from Europe, flying in from Australia and New Zealand, and that sort of thing. Make sure people can get there, um, that there's places for them to stay and that's good conditions, that they're handicapped accessible, because science fiction, literary science fiction fans, for people who've been going to this world con for decades, they're getting old. Um, and food options available, mass transit, and things for people to do outside the convention, especially if it's someplace from outside of the United States. Because if you're outside the U.S., then, hey, uh, you're going to Europe or you're going to Japan or China, you want to go, or New Zealand, uh, you want to go see the country that you're going to as well. You don't just want to hang out just in the hotel. So, that and so that you put together this package and you have a a session where they give your presentation, you take questions, and then everything is ultimately put to a vote. And so they decided we will let Chengdu go put forward with their bid. And if they win, the and let, let the Hugo attendees, the Hugo vote, World God voters decide whether they want to go to Chengdu or not. And they won their bid. Um, later, there came out some presumed irregularities that there were a lot of votes coming in from different accounts under the same email address. And there was a question of whether or not this was through questionable behavior, ballots, box stuffing. And what came out in the discussion on the list was, oh, world, Con oh, um, it's what was said is, oh, the, um, the world Con committee says it is not uncommon in fact, possibly quite common in China for multiple people to share an email address. That at the time seemed odd to me, but then again, on the people said, well, the internet is structured differently in China and how people use the internet is different in China. Maybe that's normal. This could also easily be a case of actually people making their own form of racist assumption based on China, but that is neither here nor there, and someone in the past. There were additional issues going into this. Um, the convention center venue changed with, to a new location that was built for the Worldcon initially. I believe, in fact, it was a planned, there have been plans to, like, have the, in, um, like, after the convention now, the hall where the Hugo Awards ceremony was held to be named, after, now be renamed after Hugo Gernsbach, which is interesting, but it, puts in retrospect much higher expectations upon the convention and gives the implication of a greater attention from larger forces upon the convention, the running and things like the Hugo awards as well. So this 
all of this combined with the repeated statements from the American members of the World Con Committee, of the uh, Chengdu World Con Committee, that these works had to be disqualified to be in compliance with local law, that it created the impression that the thumb was on the scale at the request, direct or indirect, um, explicit or implicit, of censorship figures within the Chinese government. Additional information has come out by fa um, through investigation from fans and that sort of thing, through people who read Chinese and speak Chinese and who have access to um, Chinese social media, we're looking at the various hashtags that the Chinese fans are as blindsided by this as everyone else. And that some people who know people who were on the Chengdu World Con Committee, um, or as like Chinese members, are also surprised by this, which gives the impression that some unilateral action was made. We don't know by who, and we don't, and we don't even know if the American members of the Chengdu Committee are speaking from a, from a perspective of expertise, of knowledge of what happened and why, uh, or if this is a case where they are making an approximate guess. Um, so this has led to much, not to say wailing, but much gnashing, of, gnashing and grinding of teeth, like including from authors who, when I see their social media presence on the internet, are generally very even killed and are not asked and not the kind of people who go, okay, we need a freaking app. We need a fucking explanation of what's going on right now. Like I don't expect Neil Gaiman is not an author who I anticipate getting mad in public. Um, I'm not saying he doesn't get mad, but he is someone where his social media presence is well sculpted and that he He's the kind of guy who like is very careful and cautious with how he with how he writes on social media. Um and he also doesn't do any normally doesn't do anything particularly aggro. Um if uh Neil Gaiman moderated his own blog, he would not have do anything like the um uh John Scalzi collection of essays, The Mallet of Loving Correction, where you have a caricature of John Scalzi welding a uh, comedically oversized la mallet, uh, uh, banhammer, um, leaping upon a computer. Um, that is like the opposite of the character of the image that uh, Neil Gaiman has carefully crafted and carefully considered on put together on the internet. So. When I get the impression from what Neil's writing on his twi on his Tumblr, um, on his Blue Sky and other social media packages, if I get the impression that he's pissed, son, you done screwed up. Um, you done you done that fucked up real good. So. The Glasgow World Con, Glasgow World Con, which is this coming year's World Con, has taken steps to try and rebuild some degree of trust by stating that if that when they release the nominees for the final ballot, World Con nomination, uh, Hugo Award nominations are now open. By the way, um, that when they release the ballot, that they will also state clearly what works were disqualified and explicitly for what reasons uh, for because the author was on the Hugo award committee because the work was actually published in a previous year and is no longer qualified that um, that the creator withdrew their works from consideration that whatever the reason is why those works weren't all the ballot. That is a good step in the right direction, but there is more, that the people who run Worldcon, the the World Science Fiction Society, the people at the board meetings, and the Marx Protection Committee need to do, because in multiple respects, um, various people who have been legally minded 
uh, legal Twitter, legal blue sky, legal Mastodon have been going over the rules of how the world science fiction society works and how mark protection committee works and that sort of thing. People with backgrounds in copyright law and trademark law and that sort of thing. And are, have, have pointed out that be that there aren't mechanisms currently in place for a formal structure of the world science fiction society or the marks protection committee to basically put the foot down on a convention that is engaging, engaging in questionable behavior or to declare a Hugo awards ballot or slate in or not slate, but ballot or results invalid. If there is misconduct, there isn't even a, um, third party audit of the nominations and the votes like you would have with an entity like the, um, like with the Academy of motion picture arts and sciences. Now I understand why this happens. It's because when Worldcon started, it was through groups like the Futurians, which are a tight knit group of fans and science fiction writers uh, and critics and that sort of thing. And editors, um, people like Joseph Campbell, like um, Ray Bradbury, like um, Forrest J. Ackerman, like Isaac Asimov, like where you have a core of speculative fiction fandom and creation who every, where everybody knows each other. And so everyone is up again. So you don't necessarily at the time, or you don't think you at the time need to codify certain norms for how things are going to be done. Not to get too much into modern politics, but you, if you've been paying attention to the United States legislature, the house and the Senate at all, you can understand for the past five to six years, you understand or actually eight years for that matter. You can understand what hap that norms can degrade, particularly when the people who get further and further away from the people who decided on those norms in the first place. If you have so, when you have people from outside that core, and this is not to say bringing in people from outside the core is bad, but that can cause pro. But it is if a norm is something that should be a law or a rule it's important to eventually make it a rule because otherwise you end up with problems further down the road. And so the world science fiction society and the Marx protection committee need to make steps to take those norms that would have prevented something like that has led to the degradation of trust in Science, World Science Fiction Society, the Marx Protection Committee, and the process by which Hugo Awards are decided that caused the degradation of trust, that caused the trust to pass below the trust thermocline, um, take steps to turn those norms into rules to make sure that there are mechanisms to prevent this from happening in the future, like really formal mechanisms. Um, Otherwise, like if they're not willing to change the rules for behind uh, how Hugo Awards and the statue and all of that are enforced, as people have said in varying different, very in multiple variations on this in the past, the way the rules are written now, there is a limited number of things that can be done to prevent an Avignon anti-Hugo, so to speak, um, from being selected. And that might be the future plan. I personally, Hugo, like the Hugo Awards, I think have significant value as, like have had in the past significant value as a avenue for speculative fandom as a speculative fiction fandom as a whole to determine and discuss what their favorite science fiction novels and novellas and short fiction and all of that of the year are. Um, while the Nebula Awards are great, I appreciate what they do. Um, they are also limited to the perspective of authors and editors and 
that and having a something of a people's choice option works. The Dragon Con Awards have been trying to do something similar, but they also have the alternative problem of the Dragon Con Awards do the do the video game award do the Keely Keely's thing of voting is open to the public on the internet. You don't need to go. There's nothing to stop, and it's restrictions on how on the how voting is handled. And I think having some sort of hurdle where anybody, as, as long as you get a membership to a world con, you can vote in the Hugo awards, but you have to get a membership having that, like that moderate hurdle helps to a certain extent. It, um, so there's that. Cause I, in short, there's value in a award that is open to a jet to a general fandom, but you have to execute how the awards themselves are done right. And you have to have a significant degree of transparency after Chengdu, the world science fiction society and the market protection committee have failed to execute properly on maintaining that degree of transparency and propriety in how the awards are done. Some people have suggested, oh, we're moving, uh, eliminating the nomination report. Uh, I think doing that now would do far more harm than good. I think ultimately have perhaps ex moving the execution also of the um, tabulation of ballots of our nominees and the final winners out of the were out of the con world con con committee having like the mark protection committee put together a team or even contact with a third party auditing firm to handle this process while still generating these reports might even be a better option but either way steps need to be taken to prevent this issue from happening again. Additionally, when it comes to the selection of future world cons, Uganda has a ballot, has a um, world con bid on the ballot this year. Prior to the nomination uh, or the release of the nomination report and uh, voting report for Chengdu, the same cycle of debate had been going on for the, for the Uganda world con that Uganda is a country that currently has a law in the books that has being LGBT and makes it a death penalty offense. Considering that there's a fair number of LGBT authors, um, editors and fans, uh, who would want to attend a world con that kind of puts a damper on things. And the discussion was that perhaps we should still put it to the, let the voters decide. And I think going forward, that there should be decisions made on, well, maybe like, yes, it's important to have a broader approach to speculative fiction fandom to let these other voices these, uh, with the increased visibility of um, not just African diaspora, but African um, science fiction writers from across the continent of Africa. Um, Having, an, uh, having a convention in their area to spotlight the local science fiction community is definitely valuable. Maybe this isn't the right one. That perhaps a bid from a different country might do better. Maybe South Africa um, might be a better choice. But at present... World con, um, like for at the present time, maybe the Uganda bid, if they don't decide to, re if the Uganda bid committee doesn't decide to retract it themselves, maybe this would be a situation where the World Science Fiction Society might say, determine a list of rules and criteria that you have to meet in order to host a world con. 
in terms of local laws and registration and regulations, rules that protect LGBT people, that make sure that works cannot be censored from the ballot because they contain LGBT content, because they contain works that are considered too politically radical for the local government or what have you. And put these rules together and say, hey, if you can meet this criteria, you can get a bid. Maybe and maybe this means like Uganda doesn't just doesn't meet the criteria, they're disqualified, but maybe Brazil. I don't know how the state of LGBT laws are in Brazil at the moment, but maybe Brazil. Um maybe a Korea, um, Korea, a uh, Korean bid, um, Taiwan bid, um, Thailand may run into problem because of the least majesty laws. Um, but otherwise might be okay. Um, but might be okay in other respects. Um, don't know about Vietnam. They might be okay. They might work for this. Um, that sort of thing. Other options for, uh, right. Other options options for countries to host the Hugo Awards that are outside of these big chunk of white majority countries in Europe and North America, plus Australia and New Zealand who've had it in the past and got to cycle through it and just step outside of that more. Or even if we just have a recurring, okay, every third year or every fourth year, um, the bid ends up going in Japan or South Korea. That's great too. Um, the cycling between Japan, South Korea, um, the same way that the world con tends to cycle, like it has in the past cycled between the um, United States and uh, Europe. Very like United States can't North America and Europe having like a few countries where we like where they have, a level of institutional knowledge on how to run a world con uh, locally and cycling through them. But something, but something like that. We'll see, like, it's not as, not doesn't work as well like in Europe where, where you can go between like the UK or France or Sweden or Iceland or that sort of thing. But it, it's something to expand the scope more. It still runs into the problem of global, of keeping the focus in the global North. We'd like to have more. I would like to see more world cons in the global South. Um, it's just getting a country where, or finding the country where LGBT fans can attend safely. And hopefully we will get a bid from be it from South Africa or somewhere else that will fit that criteria. One can only hope. In any case, I will be watching the lead up to this year's world to the Glasgow World Con and the Hugo Awards with great interest. We'll see how this all goes. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.